And, you know, the thinking behind HP is really the question the market seems to have. The, the stock decline has been breathtaking. If you look at this 42 percent decline in the course of a year, uh, that's upsetting to more than just John Paulson, although I can't imagine the feeling he's got with that kind of loss on top of the Chinese fraud that he was involved in, allegedly, at least uh, uh, owning shares of a company in China that sold off as well. But, you know, when you look at what the CEO is saying, Leo Apotaker, the CEO of Hewlett Packard, uh, the investors that I've talked to and that we've been reading in the analyst notes as well are just confused. I want to pull up a couple of those comments. Um, one of the things uh, uh, Leo Apotaker said just back in February, said the web OS has exceeded even our most optimistic expectations. Expectations. And he said that back in February. Well, just yesterday in the conference call, he says WebOS devices have not gained enough traction. This market space is no longer in the best interest of HP and HP shareholders. So this kind of about face has been a, a, a great concern for investors who wonder if the company really knows where it's going and whether they can take the CEO on faith of what he's saying in these conference calls. Here's another thing uh, Apple Taker told uh, uh, Bloomberg's Aaron Riccadella back in March when he was talking about the synergies created uh, through the, the connection of having PCs and having tablets. He said, you create a massive platform. He said that back in March 9. But just last night, it was a complete about face. What he had to say about synergy is that we'll be looking at all sorts of the, all of the various dis-synergies, supply chain, supply chain mitigation issues, that is of separating out the business of, of um, having the PC business and having the printer business and having all in one. So the story that they told carefully to investors, carefully scripted, literally scripted, in February and then in March to our Aaron Riccadella, a very different story they're telling investors yesterday. I think that kind of confusion is reflected in the sell-off today and indeed the sell-off over the course of the last year for HP stock. John? Great perspective, Corey. And for more on the HP story, we are joined by one of our favorites, Bloomberg contributor Paul Kodrowski, editor of the Infectious Greed blog, one of the most widely read tech blogs. Paul, you just heard from Corey. Everybody ganged up on Leo Apotaker today. Was it fair or not fair? It was totally fair, unfortunately. I mean, this was an example of a, a kind of botch, sort of a multidimensional botch here, where it would both in terms of what they announced and how they announced it, both caught investors by surprise. And so not surprisingly, the stock really took it on the chin after having already had a pretty, you know, crummy last two quarters. And so you put those two pieces together, the news was such a surprise and it was handled in such a, you know, strangely dramatic way that, you know, investors couldn't help but be shocked by both. So is it just that one day shock? Because some would argue that it's admirable that a company like HP can admit that the PC business isn't what it once was, <laughs> that the tablet is not working out for them, and they've got to make a hard decision. Yeah, it's admirable, but it's also company gutting, which is, you know, <laughs> which would I rather have? So the, the problem that they, they fundamentally have is they're essentially conceding that a major platform that they put together that was supposed to represent the future of the company in terms of synergies in their hardware business isn't working at all. And not only that, the thing with which the tablet was supposed to be synergistic, by the way, that's not working out either. And, I, you know, we can get into causes and so on, but one of them, and I kind of talked about it last week when I was on, is this whole, I call it sort of the whole Apple Death Star phenomenon. What Apple's really done here has made it impossible for even branded PC manufacturers like HP to have a pricing halo that supports the kind of prices they'd like to have from the PC business. And as a result, they turn them into a commodity manufacturer of PCs that doesn't earn back the cost of capital that HP has for that business. And so they finally say to themselves, financially, this just does not work. The trouble is it's such a large percentage of the business that losing it means a, a significant change in the value of the company. You know, you, you speak a lot about what's going on in the boardroom. What role did the board play in this sell-off today? I mean, should we be talking about them just as much as we're talking about the CEO? Yeah, sort of. But you know what? You go back to Leo's history, though. You know, he's a software guy. This is not a PC guy who's suddenly found software and services religion. So he, when he was brought in to replace Mark Hurd, everybody, myself included, had to. My first thought was, this is someone who's going to really push software and services. So the surprise to me was, in some level, it didn't happen faster. So I'm, I have to assume that the role of the board here was more the reverse. That the board was slowing down something that I'm having. I have to bet that Leo was brought in thinking that he was going to do, which was kind of do the, the IBM thing. If you remember, IBM was leading in the personal computer industry, realized the margins didn't support its cost of capital, migrated over to software and services, and that is what I think Leo thought he was brought into HP to do, and something on the board level must have slowed it down, and then finally got, gets a green light, Best Buy doesn't sell. I think it's, what, 200,000 HP tablets got shipped back? I mean, it's a remarkable number, and that's it. That's your go signal, and you, you wipe out the hardware business.
Well, you, you raise a great point because people could go to a Best Buy today and see a tablet there. So what does HP have to do next? Well, on the tablet side of things, nothing. It's obviously they're, they're, they're walking away from it entirely. I think the, the problem H, HP has fundamentally is, is internal. It's talking to its employees. You think about the history of this company with Hewlett and Packard and the orientation towards hardware innovation. Backing away from that is a dramatic cultural change in the company, one that invalidates an awful lot of the experience of the people who make HP what HP is. And so the thing they're going to be fighting is, is people jumping ship and saying, you know what, I didn't sign on to be a software and services company. If I would wanted to be at IBM, I'd be at IBM. And so I think you're going to see an exodus of many talented engineers to other companies in the Valley, which is great for them and really very bad for HP. Paul, I would love your take on what happens to the PC business, because if people say maybe Dell would buy it, obviously yeah. regulators wouldn't be happy about that. What about Lenovo buying it because they bought the IBM business? Well, that still could cause great concerns at the level of uh, uh, at Washington. So what do you think is going to happen to that business? Well, there was discussion earlier in the year, I think it was a Bloomberg story even, about Samsung. There's been discussions with Samsung, Lenovo, and others, and I think there are buyers out there for it as, for it as a commodity hardware business. I sincerely doubt it's Dell, in particular given that Dell's, you know, moving away from, you know, straight on PC sales, pushing more against, you know, cloud services, storage clusters, and all of those things that are attracting higher prices and aren't being blown out by the Apple, sort of the Apple halo and the Apple Death Star. So I think your buyers in Asia, your, your buyer is a Lenovo or Samsung, but it's not going to be at a, at a price that's particularly particularly appealing, hence the 20% haircut in the share price. And quickly before we go, what about that web OS operating system? They're looking for anybody who's interested in licensing it, maybe buying it. Is there anybody out there? God, I hope not. And if you tell me who they are, I want to be short them. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> All right, Paul. Thanks, as always, for your perspectives. That's Bloomberg contributor Paul Kodrowski joining us on the HP Story.